thank you everybody for joining. Um, so what we're going to do tonight is go over anatomy and physiology, and we're going to go over the cardiovascular system. So we're going to look at uh, the cardiovascular lesson from the Smart Edition uh, online course, or if you have the study guide, it's going to be the same lesson from that uh, from the study guide. So if you have that, you can follow along. If you don't, we're going to put it up on the screen for you, so you can just follow along. Uh, Melissa, Melissa will share her screen. And so this is nurse Melissa, and she is a pediatric nurse practitioner. Um, and I am John Wynn, I'm the founder of Smart Edition. Uh, so we are really happy to have everybody here. This is actually our first uh, Zoom group tutoring session. So we're excited to kind of see how this goes. Um, so the way that this will work, we'll go, we'll use the lesson from the course or the book if you have it. And we're gonna start off with one or two practice questions just to get you guys kind of warmed up and then uh, we'll go through the lesson, which basically is kind of structured like a one of the concepts from the cardiovascular system. There'll be a practice question and then another concept practice question, and we'll work all the way through the uh, that lesson. And then at the end of it, we'll do a few more practice questions. Uh, so if that sounds good for everybody, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, we'll get Melissa to share her screen. All right, so you can read that question, and then we'll kind of go over the answer um, and go from there. Okay. okay. So, an individual with leukemia presents with abnormally low leukocyte levels, which is strongly correlated with this low blood cell count. You guys can take a minute to answer that from those choices. Uh, and I want to make sure you guys can all see that clearly. Um, if you don't, we might be able to zoom in a little bit. Uh, but go ahead and select your choices, uh, A, B, C, or D. And if you guys want, you can put those uh, answers into the chat. And then we'll give, I don't know, a couple seconds here. Looks like mostly everybody's saying A, so looks like that should be the answer. We've got one B in there, so we'll see. Um, okay, another minute or so, and we'll go ahead and get into the answer. All right, let's go ahead and see. What's the answer to this one? Weakened A. immune system. A, okay. So with a weakened immune system, we think of leukemia, um, which is going to correlate with white blood cells, which are also called leukocytes. Um, when we have low leukocytes, we're going to have um, a weakened immune system. So it, our body is not going to fight infections as well as we would like to. And leukemia is a, you know, a, a condition where you can get really sick. So leukocytes, which are white blood cells, we will also talk about this a little bit um, later. Um, these are parts, these are blood cells um, that are made in the bone marrow and found in the blood. This type of blood cell is a significant part of the body's immune system and helps the body fight infection and disease. Leukocytes can be measured by a blood test called a complete blood count, also known as the CBC. This will detect if levels are high, low, or normal. Um, is often used to determine if there's an infection, inflammation, allergy, and leukemia in the body. If levels are low, it may indicate a weakened immune system and the body may not be able to fight the infection. And we will get into this shortly, um, but blood has three um, formed elements, which are the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and platelets. Um, and each of that, uh, each element has different duties. And we'll get into that a little bit later. All right, this is talking about electrocardiograms or EKGs. What segment of the electrocardiogram is associated with atrial systole? All right, so there's P wave, B is S wave, C, ST segment, or D, QRS complex. All right, so we've got a big IDK, does not know. Um, a lot of P waves, a couple people on the QRS. All right, got a couple Ds. All right, so. What is the answer, Melissa? 
What was the majority of the answers there? The majority of the answers were going with, I think it was kind of between D and A, P wave. The answer is P wave. All right. All right. So EKGs, um, you may have an EKG question on the T's um, or the test that you're taking. Um, if you make it to the, they get through nursing school and you're gonna become an RN, you're gonna to have to take the NCLEX, which is the national certifying um, boards to become a registered nurse. Um, these will be on that test for sure, um, if not the T's already. Um, so let's just go over um, the EKG. Um, the heart is a muscle. It transmits um, electrical impulses that cause the heart to contract. Uh, the electrical activity can be recorded using an electrocardiogram or EKG. It's a common test that's performed to assess cardiac rhythm and it's used to detect heart disease. Um, in EKG, it's a graph, as you can see here. Um, it shows the heart's rate and rhythm over a period of time. So usually on an EKG, you're not gonna just see one of these, just this one PQRST. It's gonna be multiple and it's gonna go up and down, up and down, um, depending on the rate and rhythm of your heart. In order to do this test, um, they place 10 to 12 leads. Um, they're more like little sticky patches um, in various locations on your chest, your arms and your legs. It's, it's fast, it's painless, um, and it can tell you a lot. Um, so this uh, wave here, the first wave is the P wave and it indicates atrial contraction or systole. Um, which means the heart's contracting and it's pumping blood. The QRS complex represents the combination of Q, R, and S waves. Um, and this indicates ventricular systole or contraction. So it's either going to be the atrial, the atrium, or the um, ventricles. Um, and then the T wave indicates ventricular diastole, which is when the heart chambers are filling up with blood and it's a period of relaxation for the heart. And the flat line is between the S, oops, sorry, the S and T wave. Sorry, hang on. <laughs> yes, the flat line here is the ST segment. And then it starts back over at the P wave and then it will do it again. All right, so those are kind of just two warm up questions. Let's go ahead and get into the actual lesson where we're going to kind of dive into some of this content. And it's going to be, um, you know, a mix between the high level, but we're also going to try and get in depth for you so that you guys can have a good understanding. So we have the Q, the R, and the S, which is the QRS complex. And it indicates ventricular systole. Remember, systole means that the, the heart is contracting and it's pumping the blood, okay? So ventricular systole, systole is when, we will go into this a little bit later, but when you look at the heart, you have four chambers. You have the right atrium, the right ventricle, the left atrium, and the left ventricle. So the QRS is showing us ventricular systole. So either the um, right ventricle or the left ventricle is contracting and pumping blood at that time. So the, the grab, basically atrial diastole is going to be happening when the systole for the ventricles are happening. So the atriums contract and it's pumping blood into the ventricles. So the ventricles are filling up in their, in their diastole. When the ventricles contract and pump blood, they are in systole and the atriums are in diastole and they're in resting mode. So look at your four chambers. The right atrium fills up from blood from the vena cava, the veins coming back to the heart. So at that time, they are filling up with deoxygenated blood. The left atrium will fill up during the diastole, fills up from blood coming from the lungs, okay? 
because remember blood comes to the heart deoxygenated because the body has used up the oxygen in that blood. Now it goes back to the heart to get oxygenated again, and then will circulate back into the body. So it's kind of, it goes with that heartbeat, like boom, 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 boom. And as one pumps blood, one rests and fills with blood and then back and forth. All right. So let's, uh, for the sake of time, let's go ahead and get into the lesson. Okay. So as a refresher for most of you, we're just kind of going to go over the basics. Um, throughout this Zoom, we're going to talk about um, what blood is, what it's made of, what does it do. We'll talk about blood grouping and blood typing. Then we'll talk about the cardiovascular anatomy, going back to those you know, the atriums and the ventricles again. And then we'll talk, talk about circulation, the cardiac cycle, um, and then a little bit about EKGs again. So blood, um, you know what blood is, everyone has it. Um, it's the red stuff that oozes out when you have a cut. Uh, the average person has about five liters of blood, um, but you know, what is it really and where does it come from? So just like food, blood has ingredients. It's, it's like a recipe. Um, to make blood, your body needs to mix the red blood cells, which are the erythrocytes. Um, these carry oxygen throughout the body. Then we have white blood cells, which fight infections. These are all also leukocytes. And then we have platelets, also known as thrombocytes, which are cells that help you um, stop bleeding if you get a cut. So it helps clotting and wound healing. These three are formed elements of blood. Um, we then have plasma, which is a yellowish liquid that carries nutrients, hormones, and proteins throughout the body. Um, so you'll see in a diagram a little bit lower. Um, so where does, how, do, how, does, how does our body make blood? Um, it comes from bone marrow, which is goopy stuff inside the bones. And that's where the the white, the red blood cells, the white blood cells and the platelets are made. Um, since plasma is mostly water, um, so it's absorbed from the intestines from what you eat and drink and the liver supplies important proteins for that. So when you have all these four elements, you put them all together and you have blood, the red stuff that we see when our skin is cut. And it's really an essential part of the circulatory system. Thanks to your heart, which pumps the blood and your blood vessels that carry it um, throughout your body from your head to your toes. So let's talk a little bit more about each element of blood. We have the red blood cells again, the erythrocytes. They look like little flattened basketballs. Most of the cells in the blood are red blood cells and they carry around an important chemical called hemoglobin um, which gives blood its red color, color. Now, blood and breathing go hand in hand. How you ask? The hemoglobin in blood delivers oxygen, which you get from the air you breathe, to all parts of the body. Without oxygen, your body can't keep working to stay alive. We have the white blood cells, the leukocytes. Um, these are bigger than the red blood cells. They are usually, there's usually not a whole lot of white blood cells floating around in your blood compared to the red blood cells, especially when you're healthy. When you get sick though, your body will make more of these white blood cells to protect you from that bacteria or virus that's invading your body. And there are a couple different types of uh, white blood cells that, you know, they do different things to help you stay healthy. So first we have granulocytes. Um, these also help prevent infection by surrounding and destroying things that aren't supposed to be in your body and by killing the germs, basically foreign invaders that come in and want to make you sick. You also have lymphocytes. Um, there's two types of lymphocytes. There's B cells and T cells. Uh, the B cells help make special proteins called antibodies that recognize stuff that shouldn't be in your body, like a bacteria or a virus. Um, and it will make you sick. Antibodies are specific 
and you know they can only recognize a certain type of germ. So once you have an antibody, it finds that germ and works really hard to get rid of that specific germ so it can't hurt you. So there's different ways you can get antibodies. You can get natural, which is you get sick. Uh, for example, chicken pox is a virus. You have the chicken pox when you're younger, your body has made those antibodies. So if your body sees chicken pox again, it, it recognizes it, attacks it, and you don't get chicken pox again. You can also get antibodies through vaccines, which, you know, your body, um, the injection is a weakened um, replica of a virus. And once your body, if you do get sick, your body will recognize that and fight off that infection. Um, you know, everything that's going on, think of COVID-19. If someone has had COVID-19, they likely have antibodies from it. So this means that the likelihood of getting reinfected is pretty low. Um, or if you do get reinfected, it's likely to be a much milder case. All right. And then there's mm -hmm. one more uh, leukocyte. It's a monocyte. These are also white blood cells and they fight infection by surrounding and destroying bacteria and viruses. So out of those three, lymphocytes are really the more specific and the big killers. So moving on from the white blood cells, platelets, um, also known as thrombocytes. These are tiny round cells that uh, help make sure that you don't bleed too much once your skin is cut. Um, when you have a, a cut or scrape in your skin, it breaks the blood vessels. So if a platelet reaches a blood vessel that's been broken open, it sends out a chemical signal that makes other nearby platelets start to stick together or clot inside the vessel. So the first step of this is a vascular spasm where the blood vessels constrict to reduce the blood, blood ugh, sorry, the blood loss. After the platelets form this plug or temporary seal, um, they send out more chemicals that attract clotting factors. These clotting factors work together to make a web of tiny protein threads, as you see here, more like right in here. Um, and the platelets make this web of protein and they come together to make a clot. There are, you know, people that have um, clotting disorders, blood disorders, and if they do have a cut, they can bleed out. Um, so, you know, this clotting factor is really, really important. Um, so that's platelets. Um, then we have the plasma, which we mentioned. Um, it's a yellowish liquid that's mostly water, um, but it also carries important nutrients, hormones, and proteins throughout the body. Uh, the nutrients, um, these are the chemicals um, that you get from food that you eat and give your body energy and other things your body, your body cells need to do their work and keep you healthy. And also the hormones, um, they carry messages throughout your body telling it what to do and when. Lots and lots of different hormones in the body. Um, and also plasma will carry away cell waste. So there's chemicals that the cell doesn't want anymore. So there's nutrients, hormones, proteins, and waste are dissolved in the plasma. Think of it of like, think of it like a cocoa mix that dissolves in a cup of hot water. You know, what are, what are the marshmallows? Um, the marshmallows are the blood cells and they float in that hot cocoa drink, okay? All right. So we're gonna go back up here and talk about how do we test blood? How do we know how much, how many white blood cells, how many red blood cells do we have in our blood? So I'm sure many of you have given blood before you know, they, right here, they put a needle in your arm and take out a little bit of blood that they need. Um, when they do that, the blood is put into a little sample tube here, and then usually it's sent to a lab. And this here is called a centrifuge. These little holes here, you put the vial into those holes and it spins really, really fast. When it's done, it actually separates all the elements of the blood. So here you'll see the erythrocytes, which is about 40%, 45% of the whole blood. 
you have this buffy coat. If you could see it, it's a tiny, tiny little white piece here. This has leukocytes, which are the white, you know, white blood cells and platelets, and it's less than 1% of the whole blood. The rest is plasma, that watery substance of the whole blood. So, and as we mentioned earlier, one of the more basic and comprehensive tests that someone will have done, if anything is going on, a CBC, it's complete blood count, is going to be that go-to lab test, and it can really tell us if there's anything going on. If, there, if the white blood cells are high, low, we know that something is going on, whether it's inflammation, infection, et cetera. It can also tell us how much hemoglobin, iron, et cetera, is in the blood. So there's, there's a lot that can be said from that just one test. Okay, now. It is with the practice question. Oh, where is it? Oh, we're right here. <laughs> All right, we just went over this. A laboratory technician needs, a, needs to determine the leukocyte count in a patient. From which part of the blood sample are these cells extracted? Is it the water, the buffy coat, liquid plasma, or the reddish mass? Looks like Buffy Coat is the most popular choice among our chat. So, so let's give it at, another second. Um, we're looking, determining the leukocyte count. We're going to look at leukocytes. Okay, so leukocytes in the Buffy Coat. I'm going to go with Buffy Coat. What is it? Lay it on me. Buffy Coat. Oh, it's Buffy Coat. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay, now we are going to go into blood grouping or blood typing. So everybody's blood is red, but you can't see it with, your, with the naked eye, but not all blood is the same. There's eight blood types. Um, there's four major groups. There's A, B, AB, and O. And those letters stand for certain proteins that are found on the red blood cells. And not everyone has the same proteins. In addition to getting a letter or two, um, a person's blood is either positive or negative. Now this positive, positive or negative doesn't mean that a blood is good or bad. It's just a way of keeping track of whether someone's blood has a certain protein or not. So, um, here we go. We have, all right, blood group A. So let's go over these. Um, and but your blood group is going to be, you know, inherited based off your parents or the offspring. Um, it's not always going to be the same, but it's usually going to be similar. So blood group A, it displays type A antigens on the surface of a red blood cell and contains B antibodies in the plasma. Blood group B displays type B antigens on the red blood cell surface, contains A antibodies in the plasma. Blood group O does not display A or B antigens on the surface of the red blood cells. Both A and B antibodies are in the plasma. And just the opposite for blood group AB, it displays A and B antigens on the red blood cell, but neither A nor B antibodies are in the plasma. Now, this is can get tricky and confusing. And you basically just wanna know what blood group A means right here, okay? What blood group B means. Um, when we talked about that positive or negative, that is, we're looking at the RH factor protein, um, which may or may not exist on the red blood cell surface. Um, so this is where those eight blood groups come into play. We have a positive, a negative, B positive, B negative, O positive, O negative, AB positive, and AB negative. So all eight of them are different. And not all blood groups can accept any type of blood. Um, so let's see. Okay. And just, and also keep in mind, um, it's really, really important to know what a person's blood type is. 
especially if they're donating blood or if they need to receive blood in a blood transfusion. Because if they get the wrong type of blood, it can make them really, really sick. Um, so that's why hospitals are really in blood banks are, you know, really, really careful when they're going to give someone blood. It's triple checked. It's you, you got to get it right. Tyler, uh, Tyler Wyatt is our Taylor Wyatt. I'm sorry, is asking, is there an easier way to remember this? Um, Such as mnemonics. Um, I guess there probably is one. I don't know if you know it off the top of your head, but um, you, you just got to think of it like, you know, there's four. There's A, A, B, A, B, A, B, and O. OK, and then, you know, you're going to have those and then they're going to be positive or negative. All right. Another thing. So down here, who can accept what? You just you really always want to remember that. There is one type of blood that can be a universal donor and one type of blood that can be a universal acceptor. The universal donor means that person can donate to any type of blood. The universal acceptor means that that person can receive any type of blood. And the reason for that has to do with the antigens and the antibodies, okay? <coughs> The universal donor is O blood type. And I always remember that because donor has two O's and blood group O. There's, there's a couple of people asking kind of where this material was coming from. Uh, so just to clarify for people, this is the Smart Edition online course. And you can find that on the Smart Edition Academy. Uh, dot com website and and then you'd have access to this lesson as well as lessons for all the AMP systems. Uh, it's like 100 video lessons, uh, 50 lesson modules, eight practice tests, flashcards, all that stuff. So just want to put that out there because a bunch of people are asking. Um, but uh, yes, uh, Deja Myers asked the universal donor is type O, type O, and that is correct. Yes, and the universal acceptor is a a B. Um, Basically, to, to make it more simple, uh, the, I, I feel sometimes the more you talk about it, the more confusing it can get. But everything you see here is what you should know. It's memorization, okay? It's the same. It's been the same for the past 20, 30, 40 years. And it's likely not going to change. So, you know, you want to know what blood group A means, universal donor, universal acceptor, RH factor protein for, um, excuse me, <laughs> women who have given birth here, if any of you have, um, this RH factor, if any of you have had to get a shot, like a, an injection kind of around that 30 week period, um, this is likely because you had a negative blood type. So if you had, if you have a negative, B negative, O negative, or AB negative, you would have gotten this RH factor protein injection so that when your baby was born, there wasn't a reaction um, to the baby's blood and your blood. That is a whole nother lesson. And it has, you know, it's more of a maternity. Um, if you get into nursing school, you're going to do labor and delivery and maternity, and you're going to learn a lot more about that stuff a little bit more in depth for, than what we need to know right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So, and, and like I said, learn what's here because you cannot determine someone's blood type by looking at a blood. It has to be sent to a lab and it's the tests need to be run. It's the only way you're going to find out what blood type you or someone else has. Okay. Should we do this? We should. All right, people with type O blood can accept blood from people with. Come on, guys, you know this. There's only so many blood types. People We've with got... type O blood can accept blood from people with blank oh. blood. Oh boy, we were all over the board here. We got type mm -hmm. O, type AB, uh, just O, type O. <coughs> Most of us have O here. Uh, someone's got all. A, B, only from O. So it seems like uh, O and A, B are the most popular answers here. Um, 
And I think someone's got it right here, O, but AB is the only universal acceptor. Um, so only O and O can donate. All right, uh, I am very curious. What is? All right, people with type O blood can accept. So type O blood is not a universal acceptor. They are the universal donor. So they can accept blood from people with O blood. But they're a universal donor. They can donate to all the other blood groups. All right. It's not true unless you put it in the box and it says So let's yes. see if I'm right. Let's see. Oh, capital O. I'm sorry. <laughs> but so that is correct. It is capital O. Because I'm not sure how this blue line got here. I feel like one of our participants like accidentally drew that or something and showed up. Um, but that's an interesting, it's uh, an artistic flair for tonight, I guess. <laughs> oh boy, cardiovascular anatomy. There's quite a bit here. So let's dive into this part. All right. Christella says it's confusing, but she's sure she'll understand after studying more. Absolutely. Everything is a little intimidating when you first get into it. Mm -hmm. uh, but the more you kind of do this studying and repetition, and this is also what's really good about flashcards. Uh, if you have access to flashcards, that's one of those things where you kind of learn this material and then you really drill it in with the flashcards and reinforce it um, so that you know you saw it and then you're kind of seeing it again and again with those flashcards. So that, that's a great tool to use. I think down at the bottom of this lesson, there's uh, a whole set of flashcards for cardiovascular. And if we have time, we'll flip through a couple of those. All right, sounds like people are still with us. So that is good. Okay, let's get into the anatomy of the cardiovascular system. So now that we know how blood works, let's talk about the cardiovascular system. What is it? So we have the circulatory system and it includes both the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. The cardiovascular system moves blood through the body and the lymphatic system moves lymph, lymph, which is a clear fluid that's similar to the plasma in blood. Right now we're focusing on just the cardiovascular system and how it circulates throughout the body. So parts of the cardiovascular system include the heart, which is the organ that pumps the blood and also a network of blood vessels. These blood vessels include arteries. Um, these carry blood away from the heart towards the organs and the tissues. So for arteries, you want to think that they're always going to go away, starting with the A, away from the heart, and it's always going to be oxygenated. Okay, arteries leave the heart through the aorta, another A, goes away from the heart to the organs, bringing oxygen to all your cells and other tissues and organs throughout the body. Then we have veins. Veins are blood vessels that carry blood back to the heart um, and away from the organs and tissues. So this is the old blood. This is, they've sucked out all the oxygen. We gotta bring it back to the heart is deoxygenated at this time. It's gonna come through the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava, and it's gonna pour into that right atrium and getting ready to go to the heart to get oxygen and then back out the heart. We'll go into that, that flow in a little bit. So arteries go away from the heart through the aorta and the blood is oxygenated. Veins come back to the heart, deoxygenated, coming back away from the organs and tissues. And then we have capillaries. These are very small vessels that lie in between the arteries and the veins. So once the arteries and the veins get to where they need to go, we have all the small little branches, networks that are doing all that gas and blood exchange and switching and whatnot. Okay, so the heart is found between the lungs in the middle of the chest, but it rests slightly behind and left of the sternum or the breastbone. So it's not directly in the middle, it's just slightly off to the, to the left. It's a muscular pump and it's made up mostly of cardiac muscle. There are three layers that make up the heart wall. These are the pericardium or the outer layer, the myocardium, which is the middle layer, and then the innermost layer, which is the endocardium. 
And most of the cardiac muscle is found in the myocardium, which is right in the middle. I don't know if we have a picture of that. No, I think so. But that's, those layers make up this wall of the heart because it's a big muscle pumping and squeezing. Um, so here we are. Here's our chambers that we talked about earlier. There's four chambers, right? We have the right. And when you look at it, it's, think of where your right hand is, that's the side that it's on. You have your right atrium, the upper chamber. You have your left atrium, the upper chamber. Then you have the right ventricle and the left ventricle, the lower chambers. Uh, we also have four valves that regulate blood flow in and out of the heart. So when the, when the blood is flowing through the heart, it's not just going through it, you know? So there's, there are valves. So here's a valve right here. We have the tricuspid valve in between the right atrium and the right ventricle. The tricuspid valve regulates blood flow, blood flow between these two chambers. Okay. So going back to systole and diastole, when there's systole going on in one, this one is filling up. And because we have this valve, it fills up and pools with blood. It doesn't just pour down into this chamber. So that's where the valves come in handy. So here we have the tricuspid valve. Then we have the pulmonary valve, which is, should be right here pulmonary valve. This regulates blood, blood flow from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery. Here's a pulmonary artery. One, two, this other blue one. And there's two because we have two lungs. The blood's going to each lung to get oxygen and bring it back to the heart. We then have, once it goes to the heart, the lungs comes back to the heart. We have the mitral valve, which regulates blood flow from the left atrium right here into the left ventricle. So this is the mitral valve. And then we have the aortic valve, which is right here. This regulates blood flow from the left ventricle to the aorta, which is the artery, the largest artery in the body, carrying blood away from the heart with oxygen. To remember yeah. this, we have TPMA, and this is the order, TPMA. And this is kind of a silly way for me to remember, but TP, think of toilet paper, and MA, think of you're in the bathroom saying, hey, toilet paper, MA. Which I do all the time, and it never <laughs> stops. And we also have two kids, and it, it's always toilet paper. Hey, MA. So, ah. so to remember this, you know, tricuspid valve is first, pulmonary, mitral, aortic. Okay. So now that we have these, we know these four chambers and the valves, they allow the heart to pump through the following two circulatory pathways. We have systemic circulation, which takes oxygen rich blood to the tissues and organs of the body. Then we have pulmonary circulation, which takes oxygen depleted blood to the lungs and oxygen rich blood back to the heart again. So so think about this, systemic circulation is when the blood has oxygen and it's leaving the heart, going to the body systems, okay? Pulmonary circulation is blood comes back to the heart to get oxygen from the, from the lungs, the pulmonary circulation, okay? So, so let's talk about the pathway that blood takes when it's in systemic circulation. Let's see. Okay. So like we said, systemic circulation, it's delivering oxygen rich blood throughout the body. Okay. The pulmonary vein, here we are, pulmonary vein pushes oxygenated blood into the left atrium. So it's oxygenated blood here is coming from the lungs back into the heart to the left atrium. As the atrium relaxes, oxygenated blood drains into the left ventricle 
through the mitral valve. The left ventricle pumps oxygenated blood through the aortic valve into the aorta. And then blood travels through the arteries and arterioles before reaching the capillaries that surround tissues. Okay, so that oxygen rich blood is going to other body systems and organs and cells that your body needs to function. All right, so now let's talk about, actually, hang on one second. Okay, now let's talk about the pulmonary circulation. So when we're here, the blood travel to the arteries, to the arterioles, to the capillaries that surround the tissues. Once the cells and organs use up that oxygen in the blood, we're going, going to go back to the heart. And in order to go back to the heart, we have the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava. Okay. Okay. So we're going back to those capillaries. The oxygen poor blood leaves the capillaries through small veins called venules and drains into the veins to the vena cava, cava, sorry, vena cava, and there's the superior and the inferior. The superior vena cava receives blood from the upper thorax, the head, the neck, and the upper extremities. The inferior, lower, receives blood from the lower thorax, the, the stomach, the pelvis, and the lower extremities, okay? From top to bottom, they're gonna meet at the heart, and then they empty that oxygen poor blood into the right atrium. It's kind of right about here, right here, right atrium of the heart. The blood leaves the right ventricle, goes into the right ventricle and enters the pulmonary trunk, which splits into two pulmonary arteries because we have two lungs. The pulmonary arteries lead to the lungs where the exchange of gases takes place. So carbon dioxide is removed from the blood and then oxygen enters the blood. And just as we breathe in oxygen, we breathe out carbon dioxide. So then blood is gonna leave the lungs via the pulmonary veins. Remember veins go back to the heart, arteries go away from the heart. The pulmonary veins carry freshly oxygenated heart blood to the heart, while the systemic veins carry oxygen poor blood to the heart. That oxygenated blood enters the left atrium of the heart. So we're right about here now. And I want you to keep in mind, as I said before, the arteries carry oxygenated blood away from the heart. And the pulmonary circulation is the only time an artery, pulmonary artery, goes away from the heart deoxygenated, okay? Because it's going to the lungs. And it's also the only time that a vein is going to bring oxygenated blood back to the heart, okay? So it gets a little tricky here. Only in pulmonary circulation. So once the blood is in the left atrium, it will go into the left ventricle and then it enters the systemic circulation via the aorta, which we just talked about before. And keep in mind, blood can only go one way. It always goes this way. If it goes the other way, it's also called a regurgitation and it's a backflow of blood and it's not good. It, it can happen, it's not impossible. It's often because a valve isn't working properly, which means someone may have a heart valve disease. Um, but for this information, this is how it should be. It should not go backwards, okay? All right, is there another question over here? All right, let's match the heart valve to the areas of the heart that it regulates blood flow for. So the right atrium and the right ventricle. 
Do we remember which valve is in between the right atrium and the right ventricle? Remember, think of my TPMA, toilet paper, Ma. Ma, more toilet paper. All right, so the right atrium is where the, the, the vena cava bring back deoxygenated blood back to the heart into the right atrium. And then we're gonna have the tricuspid valve. Right? Then we have right ventricle to the pulmonary artery. Pulmonary. That's right. Wow. Yep. Everybody's really on it tonight for being uh, either 10 o'clock, 8 o'clock, or 7 o'clock. Everybody's on it. I'm pretty impressed here. All right. So then the, the blood comes back from the lungs with oxygen through the pulmonary vein into the left atrium. And what's the valve in between left atrium and left ventricle? We're going to go with mitral. mitral valve. And finally, the left ventricle is going to send the blood, oxygenated blood, away from the heart to the, through the aorta, through the aortic valve. Let's see if that's right. Yay. <laughs> Great job, everyone. Good job. Pretty much towards the end. Okay, Melissa says we're yeah. pretty much towards the end. So we'll uh, we'll give this another maybe like 10 minutes. Um, and then I think we'll, we'll be at the end. And then there is a short review where we'll just give a couple of bullets on the most important things that were in this lesson tonight. Um, we can do like one or two more practice questions. And then uh, I think we will just go ahead and wrap it up from there. Uh, but I'm hoping this has all been really helpful for you guys. Um, and as you guys can see, if you're going through this, I mean, if you have the course, again, you can uh, do a lot of these exercises yourself and you can kind of see it's not just multiple choice questions. It's kind of these mix and match or fill in the blanks. Um, you can see there's flashcards here uh, that kind of go over things. So we'll see how far we can get and we'll try and get to as much of this as we can. Um, yeah, this less review. So these are kind of the main topic or the main most important things to remember in this lesson. So if you want to pick a few of those out and just kind of cap it off with some of these main points to review. Okay. Um, so just remember, you know, blood, it's, you know, connective tissue. If there's formed elements, which are the erythrocytes, leukocytes, thrombocytes, red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets, um, and these make up the blood. Um, and there's also, you know, the nutrients, the wastes and whatnot that are kind of within that plasma of blood. blood. Um, blood's transporting substances through the body. Um, it regulates physiological processes. It protects the body. It does a lot of stuff more than, you know, what we covered here tonight. So, you know, just for this test, learn the basics, you know, um, of course, when you're a nurse, when you decide to, you know, figure out which field you're going to go into, of course, there's going to be certain fields of nursing where you're going to need to know a little bit more about the blood. If you're working in the cardiac floor, you're going to need to know all of this. Um, but you know, a lot of stuff you're going to learn along the way. You're, you're not going to need to know it tonight. You're not going to need to know everything, but for now, for this test, focus on the basics. Okay. Focus on the, the, the bolded words, you know, what is what, um, remember, you know, the blood grouping, there's, there's eight blood types, you know, there's four common blood groups, the four common blood groups, the A, B, O, and AB. Um, and if you have this, um, course, you know, go write down that chart, put it on a, you know, a, you know, a card, a flash card that you can make yourself and just learn that chart, which blood can get which blood which blood cannot get another blood and, you know, just know what happens when you get the wrong blood and, you know, the positive and negative portions of the blood, that RH factor. Um, and then when we talk about the, cardio, the cardiovascular system as a whole, how does it circulate through the body? What is that systemic circulation? What is the pulmonary circulation? It's, you know, once you know that basic anatomy, 
Um, where's the right atrium, the right ventricle? You know, once you know what the heart is and where all those pieces of it are, you're gonna understand that flow a little bit better. So just break it down. It seems very overwhelming. There's those pictures, there seems to be a lot of parts, but when you follow it step-by-step, step, it really does make sense. And it's, it's pretty simple, um, but you just gotta really take, take the time to know the pieces. <clears throat> um, and then, like we talked about earlier, the cardiac cycle, the contraction, the, you know, the systole, the diastole, the relaxation, the relaxation states of the, the atria and the ventricles, you know, and just know what that means, the electrocardiogram. Maybe if you do a little Google search, you know, um, EKG examples. I know there's option, there's there's many different options out there because I can guarantee you if you get a question on this test, it it may be the basic one we have here. That's the the across the board normal EKG, but there may be something that's a little off and you're gonna wanna um, study those just in case. And that's really it for this, this, um, this lesson. Okay, cool. Well, thank you, Nurse Melissa. Uh, I am excited here. I'm gonna throw in a couple of these flashcards and I want you guys to throw it in the chat. Um, uh, what, if you want to, you can throw it in the chat, but we'll just go over a couple of these uh, basic flashcards. So this is gonna be a term for the veins. And what do the veins do? They carry blood towards the heart and away from the organs and tissues. Uh, I know I got that one right. So I'm gonna mark it as right. Uh, venules. Venules. We didn't venules. talk too much about them, but think of them as the opposite. So when the blood is in the arteries, it goes to the ar arteries, to the arterioles, to the capillaries. So just break it down. Arteries, the biggest part. Arterioles are a little bit smaller. Capillaries are really small, which is where that gas exchange happens. Venules, it's this, you know, the same as the arterioles. arterioles. So it's veins are the big ones, the venules into the capillaries. So there's smaller branches of the veins. All right. Now guys, there's, a, there's like 25 flashcards in here, but I'm having too much fun. And I promised that we would do one or two practice questions at the end to cap this off. Uh, and so let's do that. We'll do two more practice questions and then call it a night. And we'll look forward to doing some more of these. Uh, so let's flip over to the practice questions. And I think uh, let's go with... <clears throat> Number 13, what happens after the blood leaves the pulmonary vein? A, it flows through the aorta. B, it pours into the left atrium. C, it travels through the arteries. Or D, it passes by the superior vena cava. Now, what, what do we think here? Hold on, hold on, hold on. A lot of B, a lot of Bs. It pours into the left atrium. If everybody says B, then it must be true. How could all these people be wrong? Has anybody got an A, C, or D? I think we got all the smart people here who got it right, but let's see what it says. All right, so the correct answer was B, and why is that the right answer? So going back to that systemic circulation, pulmonary circulation, you really wanna know the anatomy of the heart. So once you know, um, you know, arteries go away from the heart, veins come back to the heart. The blood is coming from the right ventricle into the pulmonary artery that takes you to, takes the blood to the lungs. The blood in the lungs is going to come back to the heart through the pulmonary vein where it goes into the left atrium. So this is just a pure example of knowing where the pulmonary vein is and what is that flow? What is that flow of blood once it's in the heart? So here's the, here's the image here is coming from the blue is blue is deoxygenated. So it's the veins inferior from the lower part of the body, superior from the upper part of the body into the right atrium, right ventricle, pulmonary artery into the lungs. 
back into the lungs through the pulmonary veins into the left atria, through the mitral valve and the left ventricle, to the aorta through the aortic valve, which is right here, and aorta into the rest of the body. Cool. All right. So this is going to be the last question. Uh, and we really appreciate everybody hanging in. I know it's kind of getting late, but uh, I think with everybody's schedule, this kind of time frame works the best. So Melissa, let's finish this out with question number six. <clears throat> number six. Okay. A patient presents with excessive bruising, ex excessive bleeding, and slow wound healing. What does the patient's blood test reveal? A, low platelet count. B, high antibody count. C, high red blood cell count. Or D, low white blood cell count. We've got A, 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 20 times. So I think we're doing good here. I'm kind of proud of everybody here. It's like almost like uh, you guys have studied some of this stuff before. Hopefully we all let's learned something tonight. It's, let's see if it's A, low platelet count. Yay. <laughs> and this is, you know, we talked about this earlier. Platelets are that one, a part of the formed elements of blood. Uh, the white blood cells, the red blood cells, and the platelets. Platelets are important for wound healing, clotting. So if someone's bruising, you know, if someone bruises, that means there's, you know, bleeding underneath the skin. Especially if there's excessive bleeding, that means there's nothing clotting, plugging up that wound. So the blood's just going to pour out. Um, and the wound's not going to heal if it's still bleeding. So they're going to have a low platelet count. They don't have a lot of platelets. There's not much, you know, it's not much of anything doing anything in there. So the hemostasis, that's the whole process when you do have like a normal platelet formation. <clears throat> cool. All right, guys. Well, it has been real. Uh, I enjoyed this. I think it was great. I'm looking forward to do some more. We'll go ahead and start planning these uh, more to do. Um, and then... Uh, other than that, guys, have a great night, and we'll see everybody soon. So have a good night, guys. Bye, everyone. Good Thank luck. you. Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. You're welcome.